we initially said was, and we were asked if we could leave Motorola out of the meeting so that they could talk to us about what they could provide. And, and that's where we were, is we, we did not invite them to that meeting so that we could understand what the state police and the star system could provide the county at a terrific saving. They are now in the process of sending those certified letters looking for those frequencies that would enable us to go to the STAR system. There are a number of locali localities looking to go to the STAR system because of the tremendous savings it does bring to localities. The real problem is the frequencies that we need. There are very few of them around, and there are only a few localities that are going to be able to do that. We look like we are one of the localities that are capable of being accepted to that STAR system and reducing our cost. They have a 95% coverage in, the, in, the, in Caroline County. So our coverage problem for the sheriff's office would be solved and fire and rescue. Paging is another situation that we're going to have to look at. We talked about how we would handle paging. We are waiting for them to come back. We may have to do paging differently than we're doing it now. The other topic that we talked about is what other avenues do we have in terms of technology to move forward. The governor's office indicated there are some other avenues that we could actually we could actually use to become narrow banded, but we wanted to cover this one. It, it is the least expensive and has the highest probability of us being able to actually um, be accepted on. And, and in terms of the 2013 deadline, there are there is a bill in Congress currently in subcommittee that is looking for a two-year extension to 2015 on narrow band. Uh, it, it's there now. We are not. Seventy-eight percent of the localities in just New Jersey have not narrow banded. We are not alone, and we are not the only locality in Virginia that's by far not going to make the 2013 deadline. Um, I have talked to Congressman Whitman's office. I have talked to Congressman Cantor's office to look at how to move this legislation through the process so that we could get the two-year extension so that all localities will have time to look at how to narrow band. We are also looking at a 2017 change in the standard again. The, the governor's office readily admitted that that was a problem. They know it's coming. They don't know how that's going to be handled yet, and neither does Congress. Both uh, Mr. Black and I talked to Congressman Whitman about that, he is well aware of that problem, having served in the Board of Supervisors and was under this same sort of mandate of the 2013 deadline for narrow banding. He was also aware of the change in technology coming. So even if we, I mean, negotiating with Motorola may be inevitable at some point in time, but the amount of money that it's going to cost us, I'm not sure that that is the best way to go to narrow band. I, and I understand that completely. My, my reason for bringing this to the board tonight is the fact that I think it's unfair to staff that when a decision has been made by this board, the entire board, or the majority of this board, and has given direction to staff to go in a, and this, we appointed a committee some, some months ago, a year or more ago, to, to look at this issue. Once a decision has been made by this board, I don't believe that any member of the board or less than the majority of the members of the board has the authority to direct that something, that the board's decision be stopped to change without coming back to this board and explaining to this board why they believe a change should be made in the decision. And that's the reason I bring it forth tonight. Is is the fact that I have no problem, and I understand what you're saying, Mr. Seeley. Uh, certainly, I've heard some of the discussions, and I've uh, spoke to some of the people that, that uh, have been involved in, in uh, this, this, this issue. So I understand. But I think that it should be a decision by this board and not by one or two members of this board. And I, I don't know that it was two members. and maybe just been one, one member of this board to stop moving because they didn't feel like it was in the best interest. The board made the decision to move forward. The board should be the one that makes the decision to not to go any further with the process and to stop the process. And that's the reason I bring it for this board tonight. If this board, the majority of this board says, let's stop, let's not negotiate with Motorola, let's, let's put them on hold, let's 
keep them at arm's length until for the next 30 days or 60 days, that's fine with me. And I'll certainly support that. But I just believe that uh, that is, it should be a board decision and not an individual board member decision. Can you give us an idea financially what, what the difference is? You've, you've talked to STARS, I'm sorry. Can you give us an idea financially what the difference is? I know we've talked to STARS before or talked to the state police about STARS and, and our preliminary results were 12 million for the new narrow band. Right. Comparatively, what, what's the cost of STARS look like? I mean, it's, it's like anything else. You can go to the Cadillac of STARS system or you can get the basics. Um, we're looking at the Chevy Chevette. <laughs> uh, we're looking, uh, the numbers that we've gotten are four to five. Four to five million. million. Which is, you know, compared to what some of the other numbers we've seen, significantly less. Okay. That if, that's, that's if, if, you know, if we can get on, if, if, if everything works out, if the glove fits. Okay. Is that 95% coverage? 95 percent coverage, yes. Okay. Now the paging, as Mr. Seeley said, the paging, um, the paging is an the paging is an issue. That is and a separate issue that we would have to address <coughs> at additional cost. Is that correct? Yes. That is correct. And do we have any idea what that cost what the cost would be? Mr. Chairman, if Mr. I may, uh, uh, Scott okay. Moser from the Sheriff's Office has, has followed up on this a little bit more, and I, I don't want to uh, give the impression that we have good solid numbers here, but Six million dollars, uh, he believes, is a safe estimate, uh, including the, the, the paging system, uh, the entire system at the coverage level that we talked about. But I suppose, I mean, if I can add, Mr. Chairman, yeah. I, I'm still of the mindset that I don't think anybody from the federal government is going to come here and take our radios. I agree. And I am, I am trying to drag my feet as much as possible mm -hmm. until somebody comes and twists my arm to make me spend six million dollars for a new radio system that's going to change in a year or two after we get it installed. Right. So I'm, I'm going to drag as hard as I can, but I understand it's a good idea to have less cost if I eventually have to do it at five or six. That's better than 12. But I, I want to make sure that we understand before we jump in and spend $5 million because it's cheaper, the technology is the technology is changing every day. And let me add that if the STAR system is also forced to change in 2017, we would be in their update cost, and our cost will be significantly less by, by being tacked onto the state police because it will be universal across the state. We won't lose coverage, and we will update. We will go with that standard change with them at the same time and could do a bulk purchase with them. And that is their intent, is to bring as many folks as they can aboard the STAR system to distribute the cost as much as they can so that the overall upgrade cost will be as, 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 as small as possible. Right. Mr. Black and I, we've talked about this before, and, and as he has said, you know, you can pretty much count on about 10% of the cost of the, the system uh, for maintenance costs per year. Right. And so, yeah, I understand that $1.2 million, and, and Certainly, I would think this board, if it is able to join onto the STARS uh, program that the state police has, it makes sense to do that. And I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. All I, have is, all I was saying is, when a decision is made by this board, I believe the decision should be overturned by this board now, now, as to what happens. Is there a real issue? I mean, I've got a little bit of experience in this particular industry segment. Motorola is going to recommend Motorola radios. State police is too. I mean, th but that's, and that's my point. The state police is using Motorola now. Right. Is there a problem talking to both of them? Yeah. Why? They have a, right now, and we talked about that was this with the state police, they have a contract for STARS. Motorola. Yeah. The, the state, state police, police has, right. a, has a contract with set prices for that equipment. Okay. What we don't want to do is negotiate for a, what we're going to do is enter into a negotiation with Motorola equipment, which means we'll have our own contract with them, and the state police doesn't want to be in competition contract-wise with our contract with Motorola and their contract with Motorola. And they were pretty plain about that when we met with them. But, but, but if, if, if we're actually following this process that, that we already set up, that's negotiating with Motorola for an entire system, right? It's equipment. That's, it's equipment. But it's going to be, right, but it's going to end up being the entire system. And then... Even though we all know, come on, let's not be silly. Motorola's going to recommend Motorola, and they're going to come back and say, we're going to do it with Motorola, whatever. 
what does that have to, does that have a real problem with us talking to state police saying we would like to be on stars but as a fallback if we can't be on stars because there's not enough frequency or whatever we will be forced and I will be kicking and screaming all the way to spend 12 million dollars on this Motorola system we're talking about I mean, it's, I, I, I don't am, understand. I am going to go with the state police who have who've investigated this and have told us that it, it is a conflict to, for, for them to deal with us if we have a Motorola contract already. I, I don't know how the contracts are written. Wait, wait, you just said, you just said if we have a Motorola contract already. We we're, won't have a Motorola we're, contract. We're going into negotiations for equipment. We don't know what equipment, I don't know what equipment goes into STARS. Who's I'm following their advice right. because right. they've got the contract. And they know the ins and outs. And I understand that. I'm, I'm sure the staff that's, that's this committee, you know, Major Mosier and whatever, I'm sure you guys are smart enough to say, there's a state contract already. You're going to give us at least that price or something better. I mean, come on. Right? That's negotiating 101. I already got this price. If Why am I going to negotiate if, if when I already end, got this If price? we enter into a contract with Motorola, we will have our own contract. We will not have the state. If we're going to do that, then let's just work with the state contract that already exists and not get our own contract. Because what we're doing is we're negotiating our own. But I can get a cheaper contract, can I? No. Oh, come on. I'm you in sales. Do, you I'll, sell, be, you, you I'll sell you something less than your state you contract. You won't do better than the state. They're already buying far more equipment than we're buying. That, that's that way more. the point. That, way I mean, more. That's the point. I just want to get to the bottom we're, line. They're, of they're the buying more equipment. But, Mr. Chairman, what, what we're talking about here is process. That's correct. Versus cost right now. We haven't got to cost. That's correct. I think we're pulling the cart before the horse. Okay. The, pro the question is, once the board has made a decision, yes. can we go back as individual and change that decision? That's correct. That's, the, that be, is that's correct. what we're debating. That is correct. Okay. That's that's a, and that's a the other parts are saying. moved You're right. You're right. until we say what we should be doing here. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue. What is the process and how should we do it? And, and we want to save the county as much money as possible, and certainly we, we send individuals there to talk for us to make sure that we could save money and look at possibilities. But the issue at hand right now is how do we rectify, prevent this from happening, and make sure we're all on the same page so we're all on one accord and we're all marching to the same drumbeat. That's what is before us right now. Mr. Underwood, you said it, said it quite well. And, uh uh, the, the fact is, and as I've said in the very beginning, I'm not opposed to going back and readdressing and revisiting the issue, but I do not believe that me as chairman, Thomas as vice chairman, or any individual board member has the right, has the authority to, to change the decision that has been made by this board and direct staff to do something that is in contrary to what the board has said we wanted to move in that direction. That is my and, point. Right. That is my question. And, and, and we agree, at least I agree with you, Mr. Chairman, so how do we move forward and not beat this horse and my to death? Let's go ahead and find a way to, to fix this so that it does not occur, so that we all, again, understand the process by which we should be operating under. And I, Good point. I, and I suppose that one of the ways that we, we do that, number one, is do we want to address this issue, but in future issues, I think that uh, there, I was always thought that it was an understanding among this board that that one member had the authority to change uh, decisions made by this board. But again, if the vote needs to be taken, a motion needs to be made, and a vote needs to be taken on that issue, then we'll do that. Mr. We'll Chairman, and, 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 and I may be, and I'm going to back up to the last meeting when we got appointed, and I, and I will, will say that maybe we've overstepped, but we were appointed to go talk. Absolutely. And, in, and in that discussion, before we got to that meeting, the state police had asked that the vendor not be present. We may want to talk to them before we talk to the vendor. Because that was their recommendation based on everything that they'd done up to that point. So I, I don't know that anybody purposely said, we're not going to negotiate. What we did is we, we went on the fact-finding mission with the state police, the governor's office, and all the members of the committee to find out where we were. And I don't think anybody on the committee had a real issue once they understood what we could say. Has, has the comment been made, and you can let me know uh, from your standpoint, has the comment been made, stop negotiations with uh, Motorola, have 
keep an arm's length with Motorola. We do not want to have any contact with those people. Has that, has that been made? What we said was is that we needed to meet with the state police on, their, on the terms that they said were the most favorable for us to move forward. Then I think those, those types of things are, are issues that need to be brought back to this board, this board be advised of, and then this board decide the direction it wants to go in. That's, that's I, what I'm I'm saying. No that issue with that. I did not. I did not know anything about the let's, issue. Let's, let's just do that now. Outside source. Let's just do that now. Does the entire board want to go? Want to stop discussing with Motorola and go with Stars only? Do we want to try to keep talking to Stars and then talking to Motorola? We make that decision now. Then we understand that we won't have that issue in the future. But let's clear it up now and move on. Because I only got a I guess number of heartbeats. The only thing I would say, if, if, if I may. <laughs> is right. that in order to make an informed decision, I would think you need as many facts as possible. Uh, I don't think that we ought to, I don't want us to go out and do something that will cause us to, to lose a, a good deal. Uh, but I can tell you, everybody pushes their own. And it's a, it's a money thing. I mean, you know, and, and if, if, if we need to, not negotiate with Motorola, if that's going to create a problem, I have no problem with us not doing it. I just want to make sure that we uh, have uh, all of the available information out there that's possible before we make a decision. Uh, that's, that's my concern. But, but it sounds, sounds to me as if the state police doesn't, they don't want us to, to uh, negotiate with Motorola, then I, I think they have skin in the game somewhere. I think we need to hear from both parties. In order, to, in order to make an educated decision, I think that's what we're required to do is get, as Mr. Taylor says, get all the information. And if the state police says, ah, don't do that because you can't get on our system, but yet they're dealing with Motorola, right. something, something doesn't smell right to me. Every, the state, you're absolutely correct. The state police, the software, the hardware, and all that's through Motorola. Uh, Motorola has indicated, it's my understanding, has indicated that it would be quite costly if the county wanted to hook on or get on to the star system right. because of the software packages and things of that nature. You're absolutely correct. So does the board want Motorola to come at the next board meeting and advise and tell us what their side of the story is? Is that what we want to do? I don't know the state police side. Absolutely. Well, we don't have the state police side. We have well, the I'm interpretation. Mr. Black no, sir, we have the interpretation of the police <coughs> state right. police. I think they should come here, if we ask Motorola to come, I think they should come and explain it to us or meet, a, meet with us in a, in a closed session so that we can get a full understanding. Yeah. I, I guess that the fact is the state police did not come to us to ask us to join that system. We went to them and asked them right. could we join that system possibly. Mr. Black, is that not correct? You had discussion with the state police? Yes. Uh, and so, you know, if the state police allows us to, to join that system and that we are able to hook on to that system without being extremely costly, then you know, the state police is basically will be doing us, uh, uh, I don't want to say a favor, but they certainly will be looked favorably it's a, a win-win, because we're going to give them some money. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, a win-win. So, so, Mr. Mr. Rakers, I where you're coming from. Mr. Mr. Rakers, can I, can I say something? I, I think a lot of this could be a, a moot point. I, we have a lot of hurdles technically to, uh, to deal with before we would even think about. There's a lot of hurdles, as Mr. Seeley was talking about, with the STAR system, uh, technical hurdles that kind of above me. I mean, Mr. Seeley is uh, awfully familiar with this stuff. And that, that is a challenge. Um, and it was, what, 30 to, they said about 30 or 60 days. Um, they would kind of basically know an answer if it was a yes or no, even the possibility right. of getting on the system. So, um, my take is, my personal take is we wait the 30 to 60 days just to see if it's, I mean, because there's no use to even talking, to continue to talk to state police. They come back and say it's technically not going to be possible. Do I lose 30 to 60 days that is, negotiating with Motorola? Yeah, that is the issue. That, that's the issue that I, that I was talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Do we lose that, that valuable time, possibly valuable time, that we, uh, we're not going to be able to get back? If you had a contract in place today for a new system, you would not make the tw January 2013 deadline now. You couldn't do the foliage penetration testing until next spring. I'm not going to make it anyhow. So, and, and, and the way I see it is that the 60 days that we spend 
seeing if the star system will fit our needs, which will give us better coverage than we can, we're going to get buying our own system at this point, far outweighs. We're not making January 2013 today no matter what. So 60 more days is, is irrelevant. It doesn't buy us anything on, on the back end of what we're doing. If that's the decision of this board, then we'll wait 60 days. And if that's what this board wants to do, somebody make a motion, second it, and we'll vote on it. It'll either pass or it'll fail. Simple as that. I make a motion that we, uh, we, we continue to negotiate with the state police, the governor's office, on the star system, on those frequencies. They have, they have said it would take them 60 days to come back with the, avail with the technical availability of that, and then at that point evaluate where we, where we need to go from there. All right, so, but your motion is also including that we do not negotiate, we do, and we hold Motorola at arm's length in a, a contract of our own. And I will, I will amend that motion to say that we not negotiate with Motorola until we, we have the conclusive evidence from the governor's office, the state police, okay. in those determinations. Is there a second? I second. Discussion I, of the motion. I just have yeah. a question. Are, are, are Mr. You Underwood, saying, Mr. Underwood was, uh, oh, I'm was sorry, first. I'm sorry. I just have a point of order. I thought we were going to discuss process first. Now we're on, or did we, did we close that argument? Well, I, I think he's or, fixing process. On this particular issue, we're fixing the process because okay. we're saying we are correcting what the board has, has done. All right. If, if I stand corrected, Mr. Chair. Uh, my question was, uh, are you saying for 60-day period or are you saying for as long? Uh, that's my 60 concern. days is what his motion says. I, I've got 60 days because okay. I think from 60 days from now, we should, okay. if, if we don't know something, then, then we have, if we don't know 60 days from now, then the state police aren't going to be able to help us. Okay. Further discussion of the motion? Yeah, I have a question just to make sure. Um, and maybe Mr. Garnett could help. Is, is that 60 days going to cause any problem with our negotiation with Motorola as far as this original process we've gone through? So if we just slow walk them for 60 days, is there a problem? I can't speak to the RT has a Mr. Garnett, if you come up to the front here. It's much more comfortable back there. I, know but, it uh, is. Uh, I can't speak offhand if the RIPs have an expiration deadline, uh, if They're by any period of right, time right. In, in which all of that action in goes aside. And I don't know if, if Mr. Parton uh, can speak to that or not. Yeah, I, I'm not sure either. Uh, but frankly, I, I don't believe that uh, given the amount of money involved here, that there'd be a problem with uh, extending that out a little further. I'm, well, I'm telling you now, I'm not going to vote to spend $12 million on anything. So, but I just want to see if there was a problem. Now, technology is still going down in price, so $12 million today might be 11 10 next year. But I just want to see if there was a problem with them pulling their bid away, which they could do. But then Harris and, and Tato, the other two vendors, and it's a very competitive industry. So, okay. Certain, right, certainly, the being able to discuss the, the paging component of a project alone might be beneficial, but in Mr. Steeler's response, the, the amount of time to get a system online is, is we're going to exceed the deadline, so it yeah. may well, 30, 60 days may not make a difference. There's nothing we could do to make the 2013 deadline nothing. unless oh, we had right. some radio fairy dust. All right. And we don't have powerful. that, so. All right. All right. All in favor by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay, and the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to item number nine, clarification of the hiring freeze for the remainder of fiscal year 2011 and 2012. If the board will remember that uh, probably about two meetings ago, the board voted to ask all departments to reduce their budgets by 2%, the remaining of their budgets by 2%, and we implemented a, fire, a hiring freeze not a firing, but a hiring freeze for the remainder of this fiscal year, which ends uh, June 30th. A request has come in from Mrs. Carter's office for a uh, position that will handle DMV uh, transactions. I believe in just talking with her yesterday, that total cost would be a, about, including benefits, about $18,000, correct, Mrs. Uh, Carter? 
because DMV does provide uh, a portion of the funding. They provide us with a total amount of funding. Half of that funding is, is uh, given to the uh, Commissioner of Revenue's office, and the other half is given to the Treasurer's office to handle DMV transactions. The second request has come in from the Sheriff's office to uh, replace a dispatcher, a position that's uh, become available, open, and they would like to fill that position uh, prior to June 30th. Uh, I ask to be put back on the agenda to tonight so that the board can make a determination as to whether they want to give exceptions to these two positions, whether it wants to just uh, unfreeze the freeze that we put on for hiring, or how do we want to handle uh, Mr. Chairman, Mayor. Mr. Thomas? Um, and just looking at the report we have from, from Mrs. Carter, she's saying that $25,000 is the salary, but the county received $30,000 in DMV payments. That's for the last fiscal year. So the, the guideline we used last year is no new positions unless they could be justified by additional revenue or savings. And I'm one of, I guess I need to clarify with Mrs. Carter, that one position, 25000 brings in 30000 Is that what you're saying? No. Mrs. Carter, would you come forward, please? First of all, this is not a state comp board position, so we walk right, away right. from that. Right. This is direct money that comes from DMV for transactions that we have accomplished. Half goes to the commissioner's office, half goes to the treasurer's office. Now, we will be taking on more responsibilities this summer. Uh, that should generate more income, and we're looking for that around June, the end of June, uh, where we will be doing the boat registrations at that time so so the, the question really is is just the 30,000 is not covering this entire 25,000 it's not like if if we have this position we're going to get an extra 30,000 in revenue no sir we have to generate the income from the transactions that we do in the office but if we don't have this position how much is it going to cost me if you don't have this position it's going to cost you time on assessing is what it's going to cost us because I'll have to have the other ladies fill in the duties. So if I don't have this position, your staff will be negatively impacted, which very definitely I could figure out how much that's going to cost me, and I'm sure you're going to tell me it's more than $25,000. No, sir, I'm not because I have a hardworking staff that have really done a great job. Uh, it's just going to be very difficult with our new duties with the new decal ordinances and everything that's come down and now we have to register every new vehicle that comes to Caroline through our Caroline County system. Those duties have been all given to us. Okay. The, the $25,000 salary uh, position is, 25000 is just a salary. And the, yes, sir. Uh, benefits, I believe, uh, staff has indicated, it's about 37% of the salary. So the total cost for the position for Caroline County uh, is going to be roughly $30,000. And you'll get $15,000 to pay for that $30,000 salary. The question is, as far as I'm concerned, is the hiring freeze. Do we want to say, yeah, we're going to start making exceptions for the hiring uh, and allowing people to hire? And if you're going to do that, I would certainly hope this board then would say, we're going to lift the hiring freeze on all departments. Because I can assure you that pretty much everybody can come in here and make an argument to this board that they feel the position in their office is needed and it's going to be detrimental to the operations of Caroline County. So it's either that we lift the hiring freeze or we stay the hiring, say the hiring freeze stays in place. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Black. If, I, if I may can make a comment, I'm, I'm in 100% agreement with you. Um, I think a couple of meetings ago, Mr. Scheibel was in front of us 
talking about a uh, position that he so desperately needed. Um, and uh, we were not able to uh, give him the position. Um, and my, 